welcome to Photo Education Online. This is Larry Lursey, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to replace a sky in a photograph, or at least the way I would do it. In Photoshop, there's a million different ways of doing all these different techniques, but I've got this shot here of uh, Stonehenge that I took earlier this year, and uh, just kind of had a plain blah sky in there. And so what I'm going to do is kind of show you the steps I would go through to replace this with this sky right here. So let's just uh, jump in right here and, and go after it. I'm going to start here um, taking the uh, quick select tool and I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush here and first thing I'm going to do with the quick select tool is just start grabbing all of the things that I want to keep. And it'll work pretty fast here. Add this Looks like it's got all of that. Okay, the only thing we got to zoom in a little bit closer here and see if we want this bird. Take a little bit smaller brush. A little bit more in the front of his head. There we go. See if that grabs it. Good. I think that'll work. All right. And then um, we've got a little space in here we want to get rid of. So I'm going to switch here to the minus and get that. And to get that, there we go. I'll go ahead and get this little piece right in here. There we go, good. All right, so then what next step you're going to do once you've gone in and selected all those areas is you're going to go up here, uh, make sure we still have that brush selected, and do Refine Edge. And I've got my Smart Radius. I'm going to set that around 8.5. Uh, I've got the smoothing at 2. You can see my settings here. De uh, decontaminate colors turned off and I've got new layer with layer mask because I want to put a uh, create as a layer mask so I'm going to hit OK let it work here and if we look here at our layers palette you can see it's made a copy and this copy has a mask on it so the sky has disappeared alright that part's done now we just got to bring in the uh, sky so I'm going to drag this in and I'm going to do Command T to drag this down until it's where it needs to be, like that. All right. Now, as you can see here, it's on top of the layer with the foreground. I need it to be behind it. So I'm going to drag it down to right there. And right now, we're pretty close. So let's get in a little bit and take a look up here. Yeah, the bird still looks good. The edges look nice. Pretty easy. Um, now you get the trees down here. Let's get this out of the way. Obviously, it would be a little more complicated with trees involved, but these trees look okay right through there, so I'm, I'm okay with that for now. Um, I think you want to, when you're working on learning how to do stuff like this, I think it's important to start with something more simple like this and then start building up to things like hair and trees and things like that, which you're going to kind of follow the same process, but um, you're just going to have to do a little more fine-tuning with it. But here's got us in pretty close. All right, so now I'm going to do a couple more things just to kind of make it a little bit nicer than it already is. And the first thing I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to add a photo filter. You can see right over here it's adding the warming filter 85. And what that does is it just kind of ties it in together. If I turn it off and back on, it just gives it a little bit of warming, ties it in together a little bit. And I'm going to do one more thing here. Let me make a new layer. And I'm going to do Command Option Shift E. Copy all that together into one layer. And I'm going to apply Topaz to this. So I'm going to do Filter, Topaz Adjust 5. Topaz is one of my favorite filters to use. Um, just gives everything a little more pop. I'm going to go down over to here to Photo Pop right there. Use the preset. It's always easy. Use the presets if you can. Let's let this work for a minute, and it's basically just going to give it a little more snap, um, but I want to do that to really bring it out, uh, some of that detail a little bit, and that looks nice. One final thing I'm going to do here is go to Image Adjust Levels, and I'm going to do this trick. We did a tutorial about this um, before, but you hold down the Option key or the Alt key and drag this in until you start seeing things block up. Probably around there. Same thing this side. 
up here and the red is going to be where it's blowing out the highlights so you'll come in until you start getting some blown out in the sky hit OK there we go so I'm going to combine all these layers here together just do uh, layer merge layers into one so this top layer is the new and improved the one below is where we started so let's compare what we had so we went from here to here definitely has a lot more impact a lot more interesting a lot more depth to it um, versus just kind of a uh, drab shot right there so there's your before and your after again uh, just took a few minutes pretty simple to do um, uh, if you follow those steps not too complicated again you start adding in uh, more complex extractions of uh, taking out the skies is a lot more t difficult if you've got a lot of trees or people in it and things like that. So I would recommend you start with something simple like this and then start working up at uh, doing things a little more complicated. But that's the basics of, of how you want to do it. One thing you always want to keep in mind, not such a big issue here, but you always want to keep in mind the uh, direction of light. If you've got a strong direction of light, for example, coming from this right side, you want to make sure that the sky has the light coming from that side. Anything else you add has light coming from that side. It's really easy to pick um, images to composite that have clashing light sources. And so I think you want to keep that in mind when you're working on it. But that's basically how I would go about creating something like that. And so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know, and I hope you'll check back for more tutorials soon. Bye-bye.